This is the rights tracker. So this is our website where all of our data is, um, www.rightstracker.org. Um, it's freely available to everyone. It's also in five languages if anyone would rather check it out in a different language. Um, there's a lot of different ways to use the rights tracker, but the easiest way is just to go to the country you're interested in. Um, the first thing you see is this at a glance, this is just a summary of all of the data that we have for this country. Um, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and I'm going to go to the quality of life tab. So, like I said, we are trying to measure how well a country is using its resources to protect human rights. So we're measuring progressive realization. In international human rights law, the law states that each country has to be doing the best it can with the resources it has. Um, and so we do that by, for example, on the right to education, we look at indicators like um, primary and secondary school enrollment rates. And then our methodology looks at countries at all level of income. And then at each level of income, we can um, determine what a country can achieve. And then we compare what the country is actually achieving. Um, and so what we calculate to be um, achievable for each level of income is what we would call 100%. So here, for example, on the right to education, Liberia gets a score of 35.9%. So that's not 35% of children in school. That's not 35% of resources. What we're saying is third, um, Liberia is doing 35.9% of what it could be doing to protect and guarantee the right to education for all people. Um, so some of these scores can be a little bit difficult to understand. So for example, on the right to food, um, we give Liberia an 82.5%, meaning Liberia is doing 82.5% of what it could be doing to protect the right to food. 82.5% um, kind of sounds like it's not a bad score. Like, 2.5% on an exam, I'd be quite happy. Um, but it's actually quite bad. It's about completion of a task. So for example, um, if I were to ask my partner to do the dishes, and they came back and said, I did 82.5% of the dishes, um, I'd be a bit angry, because if you're going to do the dishes, do all of the dishes. So that's kind of what we're saying here. Um, so what we do have is we have these little um, ranges at the bottom that help you figure out what each of the scores mean. And we can see that an 82.5% actually falls in the bad range. So that's actually quite a bad score. Um, so we can see, so on the right to education, Liberia is doing 35% of what we calculate is possible to protect the right to education is very bad. On the right to food, uh, the government's doing 82.5% of what it could be doing, um, which is better, but still a bad score. And on the right to health, 73.9%, that's also a bad score. On the right to housing, the government's doing 29.8% of what it could be doing to guarantee the right to housing. That's really, really bad showing. Um, and again, this is income adjusted. So we calculate that they could do 100% um, and they're doing 29.8% of what we calculate is completely possible for a country with the amount of resources that Liberia does. And then on the right to work, 47.4%. Um, so again, that's like half of what we calculate is completely feasible. Um, so really poor showing on behalf of the government. We have some additional information. So we have lots of um kind of sentences on the record that explain the data you're welcome to copy and paste any of these directly into any of your reports or any anything that you're um, working on and for example we have little comparisons as well so compared with other countries in sub-saharan africa liberia is performing worse than average on quality of life rights <laughs> so we also have some additional detail um, so for each of the rights we measure, we create scores for all of the indicators that we use. So for example, on the right to education, um, that score is made up of the right to primary education and the right to secondary education. 
Um, so again, on primary education, the government's doing 45.7% of what it could be doing to guarantee this right. Um, this is not enrollment rates, so we're not saying how many kids are in school. However, if you do want to see the indicators that we use to create these scores, you can see them on the rights tracker by clicking um, indicator values. And so now you can see the actual enrollment rates. And also one thing about the rights tracker is if you click on pretty much anything, um, you can find where we get these data sources from. So this is from UNESCO, for example, um, and lots of other information. So I'm gonna head back to Hermes scores. And we have this for all of our um, scores. So for example, on the right to health, the government's doing 89.3% um, to guarantee the right to health for children. It's doing 96.2% to guarantee the right to health for adults, which is a lot better. But on the right to reproductive health, it's only doing 36.3% of what it could be doing. We also have some sex disaggregated data. Um, so here, for example, we can see that um, on the right to education, Liberia is doing 35.1% of what it could be doing to guarantee the right to education for women compared to what other countries are doing to guarantee the right to education for women. Um, and we have that for a lot of the different indicators we have. We also have quality of life scores. Now these are really interesting. Um, we also have overtime scores, sorry. Um, so for example, if we wanna look at the right to health, we can see how these scores have changed over time and our data set goes all the way back to 2007. Um, so if you wanna see if anything has actually improved, this is a really good place to, to have a look and also see if anything's um, gotten worse. So for example, if we look at the right to work, there actually was a sharp improvement in 2013, which is really, really good. Um, so yeah, it's if you if you want to kind of show the government that you are improving and need to keep doing that good job, or also um, if nothing's changed, then you can show them that you know whatever their policies are clearly not working. So that's our um, economic and social rights data. That's kind of all of the data we have for income adjusted. Um, quality of life rights. If you want a little bit more information, um, you can also change some of the indicator, well, some of the um, assessment standards we use. So I'll show you how to do that. But if that's like enough for you, um, you don't need to listen to what I'm about to say. <laughs> um, so all of the scores that we that we are currently showing are income adjusted. So we're saying how well is the government doing? Um, taking into account its level of income. If you do wanna see how well it's doing without considering income, so just comparing Liberia to all of the other countries in the world, you can switch to global best and you can see how that changes the scores. So these little dots here, they represent the 100% income adjusted benchmark. And then this is the difference. So for example, on the right to education, um, if the government used its resources better, this is how much um, this is how much improvement the government could do um, to protect the right to education with the level of income that it currently has. If after that it wanted to do even more and become the best country in the world to protect the right to education, then it would have all of this additional work to do to actually become the best in the world. Um, so that's just a useful thing if you're reporting self so switch back to income adjusted. We also, um, for all the countries that we measure, we the indicators that we use to create these scores, um, we group them by high income or low and middle income countries, because obviously high income and low income countries have different challenges, so you can't really compare them on the same things. Um, but if the data is available, then we do create scores. So we can also look at the high income standards um, and see which data are available. So obviously some of these we don't have data for, but if we go and look um, at the right to education, maybe the right to food. Um, so on the right to food security, for example, um, there are more data. So if you're looking around, I'm gonna switch back. If you are looking around on the right tracker, you can kind of play around and find the data that's the most useful in the work you're doing and the message that you're trying to convey. So those are our quality of life scores.
now I'm going to show you our economic, our um, civil and political rights scores. So like I mentioned, civil and political rights, we use an expert survey. So we ask human rights experts in each country. So in this case, in Liberia, we send them a survey asking them about the extent of human rights violations in the previous year. So the data we currently have looks at 2021. Um, and then we use the information they give us to create scores. So we have an overall safety from the state score of 6.4 for um, Liberia. So like I said, these are out of 10. This is no longer a percentage. Um, we're not showing how well the government is doing compared to what they could be doing for civil and political rights and international law. Um, the law doesn't say you have to do the best you can with the resources you have. You either signed up um, and promised that you weren't going to torture and ill treat people. Ill -treat people. Sorry. Um, so yeah, if you promised you weren't going to torture and ill treat people and you are, then you're breaking your promise. So we have, like I said, 6.4 is our overall score for the right to safety from the state for Liberia. Um, if we look down, we can see that falls in the fair range. So we've got our ranges here as well, but we have quite large uncertainty bands. So these bands are essentially saying that, um, according to our methodology, we believe that 6.4 is the most accurate answer, but the score could be anywhere between a 5.1 and a 7.6. Um, there's a few reasons that our, error, that our uncertainty bands can be quite large. And one is that often we don't have a huge amount of respondents. So there's a bit more of a gap <coughs> on how certain we are about the score. If we look at the right to freedom from arbitrary arrest, um, Liberia gets a 6.5 out of 10, which is a fair score, but there's actually quite a wide um, uncertainty band there. So it could be bad to good. On the right to freedom from forced disappearance, um, the government gets a 6.6 .6 out of 10. Again, not a great score. On the right to the death penalty, um, the government gets a 10 out of 10 because the death penalty is illegal in Liberia. However, if we look at extrajudicial execution, which is um, people dying by the state, so you know either um, people in prison dying from bad conditions or people dying in in interactions with police, things like that, um, the government gets a six point three out of ten. There's actually still a lot of people that are um, dying because of the state. And on the right to torture and ill treatment, the government gets a 6.2 out of 10. So again, not a great score at all. And so we can see compared to the 40 <coughs> countries in our sample, that um, <coughs> Liberia is performing close to average on the right to be safe from the state. And we also have overtime graphs to see how things have changed. Um, so because our uncertainty bands are quite large and there's quite a bit of overlap between all of these kind of light purple areas, we can't for certain say that there's been improvement or decline, um, but there's definitely been some quite a bit of changes over the last few years. Now, if we go and look at empowerment, um, we currently don't have any empowerment scores for Liberia. One of the reasons is that our survey respondents didn't answer these questions in the survey. Um, so that might just be that they didn't answer them correctly, or maybe they um, just stopped the survey before we got to those questions. But hopefully this year we'll have some data on empowerment. We do, however, have um historical data so we have last year's scores so the scores for 2020 which are just as useful to use um and you can see there's been like a steep decline in almost all three of those scores the right to participate in government the right to opinion and expression and the right to assembly and association now um let's have a look at our people at risk data so for all of the scores for all of the human rights that we measure in our survey, we ask human rights experts to tell us which groups of people are particularly at risk of human rights violations. Um, and we have this for all 13 schools that we measure. So even though the survey doesn't take into account economic and social rights, 
to create the scores, we do still ask human rights experts to give us information about which groups of people are especially at risk because it is really useful info. Um, I'm gonna to flick to this tab. So one of the groups that we um, that people can identify is LGBTQIA plus people. Um, we also have a lot of other groups like people with specific health conditions, um, men and or boys, women and or girls, uh, and people from particular areas. Next year, um, in our survey about human rights in 2022, uh, we have a new group, which is sex workers. So that's also going to be some really interesting data that we have next year. So, for example, here on the right to education, 31% um, of our human rights experts identified LGBTQIA plus people as being at risk of having their right to education violated. Um, so we're not saying that 31% of this group of people are at risk of having their right violated or that LGBTQIA plus people are 31% more likely. What we're saying is 31% of all of the human rights experts we asked said that this group is especially at risk of having the right to education violated. Um, and so we have loads of data like this. What we also have is, um, oh, this is interesting, on the right to health, 46% of experts identified LGBTQIA plus people as being at risk of having their right to health violated. And they're actually the most commonly identified group. Um, what we have these little sections here, um, show more information from survey respondents. So when our survey respondents fill out the survey, we also ask them to give us specific information about um, human rights violations in their country. So for example, on the right to health, um, human rights experts told us women, girls, and LGBTQIA plus individuals, especially those living in New Crew Town, Slipway, Clara Town, Logantown, and West Point, were especially at risk. Um, and we have these data for all of our rights. So you can see that often when it comes to economic and social rights, LGBTQIA plus people um, are especially at risk. And then if we head down to our safety from the state rights, for example, on the rights to um, freedom from forced disappearance, 7% of experts identified LGBTQIA plus people as being at risk of um, forced disappearance. And then for additional information, human rights experts told us human rights advocates, particularly those who protest sexual violence and criticize government inaction on passing policies to criminalize sexual violence and help survivors of sexual assault. Those people are especially at risk. So there's lots of really useful information um, on the rights tracker for these rights. Um, even though we don't have scores for empowerment, we still have um, people at risk data. So, for example, on the right to assembly and association, um, human rights experts told us that people who engage in protests and demonstrations, including LGBTQIA plus groups, students and professionals who protest against working conditions and low wages are especially at risk. Uh, same thing with the right to opinion and expression, um, LGBTQIA plus groups and human rights advocates, especially those who work with LGBTQIA plus groups, are especially at risk of having their right to opinion and expression violated. And there we go. So that's a quick rundown of the data that we have on Liberia in the survey. Mm -hmm.